Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. The case that I'm going to be looking into today is the murder of Adrienne Jones. Now this case is often referred to as the killer cadets which obviously you will find out why as we go through this case. But yeah it was suggested by Donald so thank you for that. I appreciate any suggestions you guys have and of course if you do have any more please do let me know. Adrienne Jessica Jones was born on the 18th of June in 1979 in Mansfield, Tarrant County, Texas. Two parents, Bill Jones and Linda Jones. They had three children together. Adrienne was the eldest and she had two younger brothers. In 1984, looking for a safe place to raise his family, Bill and Linda decided that they were going to move from Dallas to Mansfield and he was known to keep quite a tight rein on his children. Adrian was known affectionately as AJ so if I refer to as that you know that is why but he would have a lot of rules for his children and he really really did try to keep Adrian away from like teenage temptations as he said it. He actually kept that much of a tight sort of leash on him that he only just started letting Adrian go out, pa out past nine o'clock which obviously isn't a bad thing he just loved his children and wanted to make sure that they were safe and then you've got the part of him where i have actually read that he used to nail her bedroom door shut so that she couldn't sneak out so yeah i don't know whether she was known for sneaking out but adrienne had this bright future she took advanced courses she would study at least two hours per night and she was a really good athlete she was in the track team as she got older, she was actually looking to study behavioural science at university, but unfortunately she never reached that, that goal in her life. Apparently she actually used to play for the girls football team, but ended up injuring her knee, and so she decided to try out for track so that she could get fitter. And that's what she did, she joined the track team. She was really good at track and she loved it. Adrienne, like many other teenagers, loved being social. She she, it was said that she kind of thrived off attention, especially off males. And I mean, who doesn't at that age? She was 16 and she loved catching the eye of guys. And I mean, everyone does. Adrienne was very much described as the kind of girl that you would say hello to in the hallway, even if you didn't know her. So if you didn't know her, you kind of wanted to know her. She was just such a lovely girl. And she was quite popular too. So everyone wanted to know her. Let's go to the 3rd of December in 1995. She, Linda comes home after her day at work. She goes into her daughter's bedroom, who is actually on the phone. She tells her, you know, it's half 10, come, up, come off the phone. You've got to go to bed because you've got school tomorrow. And she tells her that she will come off the phone in a minute. She's just on the phone with David. Now, Linda didn't actually know who David was, but she just assumed it was a friend. And she, she, she actually knew David from track team. Adrienne knew David from track team, but obviously Linda didn't know specifically who David was. She goes to bed thinking that everything is fine. She's then woken up the next morning by Justin, who is one of Adriana's brothers, who says that Adrienne wasn't in her bedroom. At this point, it was 7am, and so Linda's thinking, what on earth's going on? She goes to check her bedroom, finds that everything that she would need for school is still there, so obviously she hasn't gone to school, but knows that her daughter would sometimes try and sneak out of the house at night time to go see friends or would sometimes go for an early morning run and so she wasn't too worried initially. So Linda decides to leave it a little while and she thinks I'll ring school later to check whether she's turned up at school, which is exactly what she does. She rings up school and school will tell her that, you know, she hasn't turned up at all. She's not in school. She's not in any of her classes. This is when she fully panics. She tells obviously Bill that Adrienne's gone missing, they don't know where she is, so she rings the police. And that is when she decides to ring around all of her friends and things and try and find anybody that may know what had happened to Adrienne. She also tries to find out who this David was. Obviously, she last was last known to be speaking to David, even though she didn't know who this David was. She's trying to figure that out as well as see whether she, any of her other friends know where she is, but none of them do. Now, the police had actually already received a phone call from a farmer who had actually found a teenage girl's body on his land. In the early hours of the morning on the 3rd of December, a farmer that was driving down this country road spotted the body of a teenage girl lied on the ground behind a barbed wire fence. Initially, I believe he thought that it was just 
roadkill like you know an, an animal that had been killed by a car but as he got closer he realized that it was a girl and her face was barely recognizable she had been shot twice one in the left cheek and one in her head and had also been bludgeoned in the head and obviously this was a murder so the police had received the call from that farmer and then they received the call from linda saying that adrian is missing the body was found on this piece of land near like a lake and it was a popular hangout for teenagers it wasn't out of the ordinary to see them hanging around the lake and things like that and it was just 10 miles away from adrian's home and so people began their suspicions immediately as to this possibly being adrian they found gunshot shells at the scene of a nine millimeter pistol which was the weapon that was used to kill her and the autopsy found that she had actually died due to the bludgeoning and the gunshot wounds there was never any evidence of a sexual assault occurring so obviously this wasn't that way inclined this murder was not that way inclined and it was found out that the, she had probably died at around 1am obviously with this body and adrian missing they bring in adrian's family to look at this body and so bill actually went down and he positively id'd this teenage girl as adrian as his daughter as you can imagine the entire family were absolutely devastated she was 16 and she had been taken away from them now the thing that was really against the police in this case was that she was very popular she was in high school she had crossed paths with so many people and that would make this investigation really really difficult so they go into school they speak to anyone and everyone teachers students friends possible people that she's crossed paths with paths with they wanted to get a feel for adrian for anybody that may have wished to do her harm anything that they could they ended up speaking to somebody called david graham and david graham and adrian were in track together so this was the, the graham that she was actually speaking to that night and they were friends they interviewed david david said that him and adrian were just friends you know there was never any relationship between them he sometimes would give her a lift home from track but that was pretty much it david was a quite an intelligent guy you know he was a good student he was actually applying for the military and to be a pilot in the air force so during these questions the detectives noted that david was very helpful very cooperative and he offered to help you know with anything else that they needed they interviewed loads of people nobody could give a person like a specific person that would want to harm adrian they end up bringing in a boy called ryan mcmillan they held him in custody for three weeks i believe questioned him you know a lot they thought that he was quite suspicious he did a polygraph test which he passed and then they did eventually release him honestly they looked into so many leads the it was really believed that whoever did this to adrian like it was a brutal personal attack and that she must have known them which is why they focus so heavily in and around her school there was a major suspect called tara in the case but eventually they found out that she had an alibi and therefore she was the alibi was very strong and she was ruled out of the case the investigation it was intense they looked in so many people but there was just nobody that really stood out to them and again if they did arrest somebody or had somebody under suspicion there would be like an alibi or something that would sort of disprove it and then they would have to let them go no matter where they looked everything ended up being a dead end essentially and they were just getting nowhere with this case but then in late august of 1996 they came up with a lead a u.s naval academy had reported that a girl told three of her classmates or three of her roommates i'm not entirely sure which that her fiance had killed somebody in the hometown of texas and obviously it was then reported the girl that was actually claiming all of this was 18 year old diane zamora diane was also a very intelligent student she put a lot into her studies she also wanted a career in military and it would later come to light that the fiance that she was going on about was none other than david graham the person that the police had interviewed at school they found him very helpful very cooperative not a suspect whatsoever he wasn't on adrian's friends list or anything like that and they just did not believe that he had anything to do with it but now she's out here claiming that he killed somebody now a little bit of background between david and diane they met about four years prior to adrian's murder 
The parent, they were both going to a small airfield south of Fort Worth and they went there for weekly meetings for the Civil Air Patrol. As I said, they were both interested in, mil interested in military careers. It was thought that she was a little bit naive and felt, people felt like she was a little bit sheltered from the outside world and she met David, she fell absolutely in love with him. They planned on what they were going to do with their lives, that they wanted children, that they wanted to get married. They would talk on the phone like all night, every night, we were late. They would, you know, just do all, everything together. They dated for a month before they told their parents that they were actually engaged. And that was in the September. They had planned their marriage for, I believe, four or five years later on the 13th of August in 2000 once they had both graduated from their military academies. Not only that, Diane didn't really have, well, she did have boyfriends before David, but David was the one that she ended up sleeping with, so that he was her first, and it really made her more committed than ever to David, because she had never slept with anyone before him, and they were just hopelessly in love with each other. So, back to the main storyline, obviously the police fly down to the Naval Academy in Maryland to interview these girls who are claiming that Diane has told them this. They confirm the story and then they go ahead and interview Diane herself. They said that she never showed any sort of guilt, remorse, any nervousness, anything like that. She basically just said that she had lied to her friends and it wasn't true. She made it up, she wanted them to respect her and so that is why she said it. Detectives didn't really believe her. They, her friends told, she told it to her friends in such a way that it just, they thought it was, there was more truth to it than the fact that it was all lies. It didn't make much sense. So detectives fly back to Texas with their new suspect in mind to try and find evidence against Diane. Once they had left as well, the Naval Academy actually asked Diane to take some leave to wait till all this blew over. They said that they didn't think that, it's not like they thought that she had done it, but they kind of just wanted her to be in the clear first. And then obviously once that happened that she could just return and come back and carry on. She went back to her grandparents house in Fort Worth but before she went there she decided that she was gonna go and see Graham and obviously tell him what had happened about her interrogation. David, sorry David Graham, not Graham, his name is David. David was shocked that Diane had actually said something to somebody because they did actually commit this murder but they had vowed to never speak of it again. She said that she told her roommates all different stories and that if they ever took it to the police that it would all be different and that she could just basically say that she made it up. With all this information uh, in mind and the new leads that they now had, they decided, the police decided that they were gonna speak to David. They asked him to take a polygraph test, which he failed, and that gave them enough sort of cause to believe he knew something more than he was letting on about this crime. So David is interrogated for two days. I believe he didn't have a lawyer present, but he decides that he is going to write out a confession. David alleged that this confession, as he was writing out, there was a police officer in the room the entire time, and he was being po prodded and poked, and this person said that it was gonna be okay, that they were gonna be lenient on him, just tell us what happened essentially and that if he if he wrote the story that they would shorten his sentence he also alleged that they were saying that you didn't need a lawyer that a lawyer would just complicate things and you know so he wrote the story he wrote about about a cold-blooded murder committed by two teens out of love and guilt and out of passion so basically what he wrote about was that in december of 95 David went ahead and told Diane that the previous month he had actually had a sexual encounter with Adrienne. They obviously did track together. He said that often he would take Adrienne home after track, give her lifts home and things like that. He had her in the car and that they decided that they were would like to have sexual relations with each other. They pulled over, they ended up having sex and then he took her home. Now, Diane was obviously not happy with this. She was absolutely devastated. Again, she was properly committed to David. They were the only people that they had had sexual relations with. Like, they were the first, and because they'd been together for like so many years, they were the only people that they had actually slept with. So she, Diane thought it was this massive violation of trust and was absolutely devastated. And I mean, like you would be, you know, your boyfriend's cheating, you're not gonna be happy about it. But Diane basically said that the only way for them to make this right and to carry on with their relationship was if Adrienne was no longer alive. So they would have to kill her because that was the only way to make this right. Basically in her eyes, an eye for an eye, 
even though that's not really an eye for an eye because sleeping with someone is not the same as killing them, but okay. And David agreed. He agreed that they were going to go ahead and kill Adrian Jones, that it would purify their love together. They basically would say that they were so committed that they would commit a murder together and it would solidify them even more. They were just sadistic and they didn't know what real love was. Real love isn't going murdering somebody, but that's what they thought, I guess. So on that night in particular, David rings up Adrienne Jones, which is the phone call conversation Linda overheard. This was on the 3rd of December at half 10, and he asked her to meet him at the front of the house at 1 a.m. What Adrienne didn't actually know what was in the car was a bag of gym weights and a nine millimeter pistol. Along with Diane, she was hiding in the boot of that car. So David picks her up, they're chatting away and off they drive. They arrive at the lake and that is when they stop and Diane climbs out from through the seats clumbers up to the back of Adrienne and hits her over the head with one of the dumbbells. David was apparently holding her down whilst this happened. This did not kill Adrienne though and she actually managed to crawl out of the window and began running away. So David and Diane are just watching as she's running but her injuries were very severe at that point and she didn't really make it very far. She collapsed in the field very close by. David then gets out of the car and he proceeds to shoot Adrienne knowing that he cannot leave her alive. He then run, They then run back to the car and they drive off and apparently Diane says to David, we shouldn't have done that, which no duh. They also turn to each other and pronounce, announce, didn't, and said how much they loved each other too. They obviously questioned him about his the murder weapon, things like that and David said that it was in his attic and they did they searched his house they recovered the gun along with several dumbbells up from the attic and after all of this time and like 300 interviews with all these different people they finally had adrian's killers they obviously arrested david they went to go and arrest diane who just kind of stared blankly at them and then just followed them to give her confession too also in the attic of david's home they found diane's diary and in that diary it was the 4th of December was circled along with 1.38 a.m. and Adrienne. So they obviously knew that Diane had something to do with it too. As they were arresting Diane, they said that they were surprised how sort of, I don't know, how not really nervous she was, how together she kept herself quiet and she just went along with everything and didn't really seem nervous or anything like that. And Diane pretty much recited exactly the same story that David had written down in his confession. So basically, they both said the exact same story. I mean, obviously they did it. Diane was obsessed over the infidelity of David. Diane's trial lasted two weeks, beginning in February of 1998. At this point, they'd actually recant both recanted their confessions, said that, you know, they didn't actually do it. And she had admitted to actually being at the scene of the crime, but said that she didn't actually kill her. She never showed any remorse over Adrian's death. The jury was asked to deliberate on charges of capital murder or the lesser charges of assault, kidnapping or false imprisonment. And on the 17th of February, after six hours of deliberations over the two days, they found Diane Zamora guilty of the capital murder in the death of Adrian Jones. Now, at this point, Linda had requested that the death penalty be taken off the table because she did not want anybody else's family to lose their child like she had. So she didn't want them to receive a death sentence for this, which is so admirable on Linda's part and so amazing. You know, they, they didn't want their families to lose their child like she had. And I think that makes her so strong and so amazing. So with that in mind, she got a life sentence and would be liable for parole after 40 years. David Graham's trial was to start on the 24th of July in 98, where he was found guilty of capital murder. Now, actually an interesting piece of information that came out during this trial was that a friend, another member of the track team called Wendy Barrett actually came forward and said that she was the one that took Adriana Jones home that day that David claimed to have slept with her. So whether he didn't sleep with her at all and had tried to do it to make Diane jealous or I don't know, push her away because he didn't want to be in a relationship with her anymore. I do not know his reasoning behind it, but he could not have possibly 
had sex with her that day because she was being taken home by somebody else. So he had lied about that. Whether they had had sex on a different occasion or, or not had sex at all, I do not know. Just that it wasn't the day that he claimed it was. So that was an interesting thing that came out of this case. Literally, Diane went mental because he admitted to having sex with Adrienne and his infidelity and they murdered her as a result of that. And it poss- it might not have even been the case. He might never have had sexual relations with Adrienne. David was also sentenced to life imprisonment. In 2008, David Graham actually said that the confession that he initially made to police was correct, even though he tried to claim that it wasn't and tried to recant it. He has also expressed remorse for killing Adrian Jones and has since said that if he could do the trial over again, he would have pled guilty to murder. This case is absolutely horrific. The fact that these cadet killers murdered Adrian because she thought that he slept with her boyfriend and then it turns out that it probably didn't even happen or it certainly didn't happen on that day but it might not have even happened at all so yeah it's just it's just so sad adrian lost her life at the age of 16. i mean i'm gonna say for nothing all all of these murders are for nothing but just sometimes the reasoning behind them is just unbelievable and this is one of those So yeah, that is the end of the case. If you guys have enjoyed this video, give a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for similar content. Anyway guys, that's all I have today on the case of Adrienne Jones. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.